Christ. What would you, if someone stopped you on the street and said, Bill, that was so wonderful, what's, well, I want more, I want, I need to, I want to sink my teeth into this, whatever this is, more, well, how would you answer them? Well, the, I, I think, I think it is really important for the humans, in the, the general humans, to become more and more inner self-managed. First step is that is to really learning and appreciating medita meditation so you can reduce the noise level inside. Second thing when that's accomplished is to really start to play with your own internal energies. And that gets into practices like Qigong. And that then you now have a quiet inside, you now have ways to enhance your energy. Now what you need are biofeedback devices. So you can build your inner capacity. The, our work shows that all humans have their acupuncture meridian chakra system at this higher gauge symmetry state <coughs> that we produce with our devices. And what that means <coughs> is that your intentions modulate or entangle with this energy flowing in that system. And that's at a higher free energy state, a thermodynamic free energy state than our normal reality, where most of our organs are. And so from this higher free energy state, that is able to drive all processes in our body and outside of our body. So that actors, performers of all kinds, people who really accomplish things in the world, they unconsciously use that system and they build that system. So now we need tools for the general public to build that system. And so those tools, uh, which we're working towards with our, our work, will allow them to go from a normal individual to an adept and then to a master and ultimately to an avatar. And all of us, I think, will ultimately take that path. So <clears throat> it, is, it is time to get about the business of really becoming and uh, that's what I think is the next step. I mean, what the bleep has opened a door, it's, it's caught the public's imagination, the general public. They want to do more. They want to be, war, be more. They want to know how. Uh, we now have device, which we're, patent hasn't been released yet, but allows us to measure the energy level of a conditioned space above our normal background reality, the U1 state. So we can have a quantitative measurement of so we can build an instrument that will do that. It'll be like a voltmeter, but it'll be, we call it size of H plus meter. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it would allow us to do that in rooms, and then ultimately if we shrink that down in size to be able to do it around the human body, we will be able to see what the level of chi flow is mm -hmm. in and out of the body. And that then can become a device that the individual can use as a biofeedback device to build their inner strength in these capacities, just as a physical gym um, is being used today for people to buff themselves. You don't want to call it a vibe meter? <laughs> Vibometer? I don't know what to call it, uh, really. The, uh, as a scientist, I've got to be careful not to be too flip about it, mm. um, because I would ultimately like to reach that community. Mm -hmm. um, but. But maybe it has to be called a vibe meter because the intermediate step to really awaken society is probably the transformation of the general public. Uh, it's so interesting. So you have a device, the vibometer, we'll call it, yes, just, okay. for, just for fun, um, that can measure the condition space, the condition. Yes. What could you do? What is that condition space in, in very practical terms? So the public you're talking about wanting to reach understands. Well, in, in, in practical terms, the way I'm presently describing it is that the normal reality deals with the atom molecule level uh, of physical reality. The with our conditioned our space, our device that conditions the space, what it does, it allows the connectivity between the atom molecule level of reality and the vacuum level of reality to increase. In the normal reality, it, the, con the connectivity is very, very small. In the theory, there has to be some in order for electromagnetism exists of any form. 
But it, in order to detect it, one has to do very careful experiments, and deep down in the statistics, you've got to get to do that. But with this device, which is consciousness embedded into a device, that lifts, that consciousness seems to lift the symmetry state, and in practical terms, it means that the connectivity between the atom molecule level and the vacuum level increases. It's as if they're parallel universes, all right? And you can only measure in one universe. So in the normal reality, it's as if this is unconnected because you can't get a signature with your instruments. But with consciousness, which lifts the gauge symmetry state, which is also a higher thermodynamic free energy state, then it increases this coupling and we begin to access the physics of the vacuum which appears to be very much related to magnetic monopoles as well as a whole variety of other things. And accessing that new physics allows intention to bring forth effects you wouldn't imagine. Now, um, the zero-point energy field that you're talking about, could you just very briefly describe what, you, you talked about that last night. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a, is it a zero-point energy field? Well, first of all, Physics de defined zero-point energy a long time ago. That's when you're at absolute zero of temperature. There is still a vibrational state in the atom molecule level of reality. And because there are, there are these vibratory states, then as, as electrons move one state to another, they'll emit photons. So the zero-point energy is very much related to a spectrum of photons. The energy in that state, the, the photon energy, is smaller than the atom energy. And the atom energy is trivial in magnitude compared to the vacuum level energy I'm talking about. So the zero-point energy in the zero-point field, people talk a lot about. Uh, and they're important, but in terms of the magnitude of the energies involved, they're quite insignificant compared to the energies that we will discover in the vacuum the vacuum level of reality and the deeper levels of, of that. So the, the one has to begin, one, one cannot use just a single blanket word of saying the zero point, as, as many, many people are doing. It's convenient, but it's, it, ultimately it gets in the, in the way of, exp of understanding these things deeply. It becomes a pop mm -hmm. kind of thing to, to say, and so I make, in my new book um, and in others. Um, I make a real distinction between these two. I don't mean to knock zero-point energy. It's, it's going to turn out to be important in many ways. Um, but people have a real misconception. They think that that's everything, you know, but it's not. So then there's the, the, the vacuum yes. energy. Right, which now, is huge. What um, you, you did an analogy last night yes. about the, could, could you go, because okay. that's so, mo right. you know, one thing, let me just tell you, we're, yeah. this, we're going to do this rabbit hole version of the, the okay. movie, and as we do the rabbit hole version, <clears throat> we talk about a concept, we're just going to basically go down smaller and smaller, more right. detailed, <clears throat> and let people burrow in, yeah. and of course the vacuum field is such a wonderful way of just describing that right. plunge into another reality. So it if is. You could well, certainly in, in my modeling, as you go from normal physical reality, and if you're going to shrink, you're going to go then to the next level, which will be the, va the physical vacuum level of reality. And if you keep shrinking more, you'll go to the emotion domain level of reality. And you shrink more, you'll go to the mind domain level of reality. And you shrink more, you'll go to the spirit domain level of reality. So they're all in this metaphorical picture you're describing of the rabbit hole.